Hi, I'm Jonathan Gave, Business Line Manager for Biomedical Benchmark. ECRI Institute hosted a webinar on October 15th entitled Clearing the Air on New Hospital Equipment Maintenance Regulations. This was a follow-up to the webinar we hosted earlier this year entitled Complying Without Crying, where we summarized the CMS rules. In Clearing the Air, we focused on how to set inspection and preventive maintenance intervals that are in compliance with the new rules. We hope that you enjoyed it. We've received some great questions at the webinar and during our follow-up survey. Let's answer some of them now. I know that the Joint Commission will classify my defibrillator as life support, so they consider it as high risk. Do I need to do what the manual says, even though I don't agree with it? That's a great question, as it touches on several concepts. Let's take them in order. You're right. The Joint Commission classifies life support equipment, like defibrillators, as high risk. That means they will apply scoring category A, which means one strike and you're out. The next concept is, can this equipment be on the Alternative Equipment Maintenance Program? The answer is yes. You are permitted to differ from the manufacturer's recommendations for life support equipment if you can do so safely. A clinical engineer or biomedical equipment technician would be considered qualified to make that determination. Is ultrasound considered radiographic slash imaging equipment? It's important to understand this since imaging equipment can't be on the AEM program. You must follow the manufacturer's recommendations for inspection and preventive maintenance, both for procedures and frequency. Imaging equipment includes radiographic equipment and ultrasound. It includes both diagnostic and therapeutic equipment. I'm keeping my radiology equipment on its own inventory. I keep the rest of my medical equipment on another inventory. Do I need to combine them to produce a single inventory for the TJC inspector? That's a good question. I'm sure that quite a few hospitals have a similar practice. I check with the Joint Commission and they confirm that you don't have to produce a single integrated inventory. If I am performing maintenance more frequently than the manufacturer's recommendation, am I still in compliance with the CMS directive? In the appendix to the CMS manual, they state, hospitals may choose to perform maintenance more frequently than the manufacturer recommends, but must use manufacturer recommended maintenance activities in such cases. The appendix provides much more detail than their memo, so you will want to read both documents very carefully. I use the run to fail maintenance strategy for some of my equipment. Do I need to change that in order to comply with the new directives? No, you don't. CMS mentions that strategy under the heading of reactive maintenance in the appendix. I'd like to make a general comment. We receive a lot of questions about how CMS or the Joint Commission would interpret the new guidelines. Please remember that you may also contact those agencies directly. I have found both of them to be very responsive to my questions. CMS, the Joint Commission, ECRI Institute, and all of you want to have safe hospitals. The more we communicate with each other, the better it is for all of us. Please contact me with any other questions or visit the conference website to learn more about the webinar. Thank you.